Hey everybody, this is Analytical Survival and let's talk a little bit about rain and more to the point, let's talk about catching the rain. I have some time ago put together a rain catchment system that has been working exceptionally well for the past four years. Now, just to let you know, I researched each component and assembled the entire system myself. Truth be told, I did actually attempt to phone a few contractors because I just didn't have the time to do it myself. But guess what? None of them ever returned my calls. I was therefore in the end forced to take it very slow and do a lot of research before proceeding. And I ended up doing the entire installation myself. And it turns out it worked out much, much better this way because I was able to control the quality components that went into the system right from the start. Now, it's my hope that through this video, you yourself can learn from this setup and start catching a resource that for the time being is completely free. So let's take a look at the entire system piece by piece and I'll explain how everything works and how it was put together. Okay, let's go. Here's the entire system. Now notice first of all that due to space limitations, I chose the Bushman Slimline tanks. They're 265 gallons a piece, so that's 530 gallons total. And that seems to do just fine for our purposes, which is at this point in time to water our organic garden. Now just so you know, you can use any type of tank, like this one here for instance, or this one here or even this one. It's all up to you. I highly recommend, however, that you get the largest tank capacity that you can afford. But we'll get into all of that in just a bit. For now, let's continue on. Here you see the cement foundation, and this is where it all started many, many years ago. I actually had a friend help me with this part. He works in the cement industry, and he did the finishing touches. As you can see, it turned out excellent. Now let's go back and take a look at the very point where the water enters the system, which is right here. Here's another look at it from below. Right here is the inflow from the rain gutters. And from here we can divert the water in one of two directions. We can go outwards draining into the storm drain or we can go inwards draining into the rain catchment system. And that all depends on how we configure the shutoff valves. For instance, if this valve is shut off here and this valve is turned on here, then the water flows towards the storm drain. If I reverse this, where this valve here is shut off and this valve here is turned on, then the water flows in the opposite direction towards the rain collection tanks. And that brings us to our first debris filter, which is called the Leaf Eater Advanced Downspout Filter. And you can just Google that and you can easily find it online. But before it even goes to this filter, I like to clamp a knee-high nylon stocking over the PVC piping just as an added measure. And here's an example of how that works. As you can see here, this added measure serves to filter out the finer particulates and it does a darn good job of it too. Now from the leaf eater filter here, the water continues and falls down in this direction right into another component called the first flush diverter and that's this part here. Again, you can just Google this and find it online from a lot of different vendors. Now, this is an extremely important part of your rain catchment system. What it does, in essence, is catch and stores the very first catch of water from your roof. And this first catch, as it's usually called, has a bunch of crud from the roof, like bird droppings or small debris from trees or whatever. And you don't want that high bacterial count crud in your water tanks. So it goes here and collects. Now, as it's filling up, there's a little plastic ball within this large tube kind of floating on the top of the water. As the water level reaches the top, the plastic ball rams up against a small valve opening at the top, which effectively seals the first flush diverter. And when that happens, the much cleaner water can then bypass the first flush diverter and make its way into the collection tanks like you see here. Now, the dirty water that's left in the first flush diverter is allowed to slowly drain away because this little valve here is set at a very, very slow drain rate. So it takes a while for the diverter to slowly drip out, but it eventually all drains in this direction, down this rubber tube and into the sump basin here and then gets pumped out to the storm drain. Again, this entire system has been up and running for over four years and it has worked like a charm. 
So the question now is, what happens as the tanks fill? That's a very good question. First of all, just know that each tank is 265 gallons. So we have a 265 gallon tank here and a second 265 gallon tank here right beside it. So again, that's a total of 530 gallons and both tanks are interconnected or as they say, daisy chained in this fashion. Here's a closer look. I use Banjo Corporation components here, and here's a schematic diagram, and each part that you see here is specced at one inch. Now, one more important thing, when you're applying sealant to these threads, do not use Teflon tape. Do not use Teflon tape, especially the cheap stuff that you find at Home Depot like this here. It's made in China and it's essentially crap and you'll regret using it because the seals will always be questionable. Now, ask me how I know this. Yep. I use cheap Teflon tape and it turned into a disaster, but I won't go into that long story. So what do we use? I use True Blue made by Rector Seal. This is specially made for water applications and it is a rock solid product. It's used by professional plumbers and it far outperforms the cheap Teflon tape by leaps and bounds, folks. Also note that daisy chaining each tank has a specific purpose and that's to allow each tank to fill up simultaneously at the same level. So as the water enters the first tank, it also flows into the second tank through the daisy chain connection with each tank maintaining the same level as they both fill. Now as both tanks fill, the water level eventually reaches the overflow outlet here and that allows the water to escape down this pipe, which in turn flows down an underground pipe in this direction and eventually into the sump basin, which then pumps out into the storm drain. Now let's look at the entire system again, and here it is. Now realize that at this point, all we really have is water sitting in two tanks. That's it, which begs the question, how are we gonna actually get all of this water out of the tanks and to our point of use? Well, that's where a pump comes in handy, and here it is right there. Here's another view of it with the protective cover on, and here it is again without the protective cover. The rainwater is drawn from this outlet with the banjo shutoff valve, and then it travels into the pump, and then out of the pump, and then down this PVC pipe. From here, the water goes underground here and here, and then follows this PVC pipe in this direction and then around the corner in this direction until it comes out at the user end point here. Now, an additional thing to consider here is that the Bushman pump is an external pressure pump. Now, what does that mean? It simply means that when the pump detects any change in pressure in the pipes, it automatically activates the switch and begins pumping water right to your source. So at the very moment when you turn the faucet on here, the pump here begins to pump water and the pump will stay on until it detects that you've turned off the faucet. Pretty neat, huh? Now the spray model here is made by a company called Gardena and what's neat about this is that it has a built-in flow meter so every time we use it it's going to tell us how many gallons we've used it also can measure in liters. We've been using this Gardena spray nozzle for around three years with no problems at all and finally here's my beautiful wife using our collected rainwater to irrigate our organic garden. Now, it's important to note here that when both tanks are full, which is 530 gallons, it will give us enough water to irrigate our garden for months and months, maybe up to a half a year and many times longer. And all of this is free, a free water source straight from the sky, and all you have to do is build a system to catch it, and it's yours. So there you have it, the complete rain catchment system. Like I said, it's been working flawlessly for us for over four years and I suspect it will continue to service for many, many more years to come. Now, one more additional tip. When you size your system, go with the largest tanks possible. Actually, I myself wish I had room for more tanks, but I don't. The reason I say this is because these two tanks here can fill up entirely with one or two good rains. Let me say that one more time. These two tanks here 
will often fill up entirely with only one or two good rains. And speaking from experience, you could do so much more with a higher water storage capacity. That is, your options are greater when you have a high capacity storage system. So just keep that in mind, folks. It's really, really important. Go with the largest tanks possible. Trust me, it'll be worth it, and you'll thank me later. One last point to make. As you all know, I homeschool full-time, and that essentially means that my time is very limited. I, therefore, will not be able to answer any follow-up questions regarding this video or this water catchment system. I wish I could, believe me, but I have to be realistic with my time constraints. That being said, I laid out the foundational idea. You'll just have to research any follow-up questions on your own. Okay, that's it for now. This is Analytical Survival saying, stay safe, my brothers and sisters.